Today we're going to go over a basic setup for Wave, a 5-in-1 monitor encoder that utilizes a 7-inch touchscreen with intuitive software UI to make high-quality live streaming easier than ever. Wave comes equipped with a daylight viewable screen and a built-in encoder that can stream H.264 video at up to 1080p60 from nearly anywhere. Let's get started with our setup. First, we need to get our Wave connected to power. There are two ways we can power the device, either through USB-C located on the bottom or with L-series batteries via the built-in plate located on the back. These power sources are hot swappable, so if one of our batteries drains during the shoot, we can replace it on the go and our Wave will stay powered. With the input connected, we'll press the power button on the upper left side of the Wave to power it on. There are three ways to connect Wave to the internet, Wi-Fi, an ethernet cable, or by using a cellular connection. Let's start with Wi-Fi. As you can see, we've already connected our antennas. The graphical user interface on Wave makes it easy to connect to a Wi-Fi network. While on the main screen, we'll tap the gear icon to bring us to system settings. Under the network section, we need to make sure wireless is selected. We'll tap on the Wi-Fi mode dropdown. To connect to the internet via a Wi-Fi network, we'll choose Client. A list of available networks will be displayed in the drop-down menu and we'll select the network we wish to connect to. We'll enter the password and tap Connect, and then we'll tap OK. Once connected, we'll see the Wi-Fi network we're connected to under the Connected To section. Keep in mind, the network we connect to will be remembered as a saved network. To view our saved networks, we can scroll down to the bottom of the wireless page to see My Saved Networks. If you're looking for a more stable connection, you can connect your wave to the internet via an ethernet cable. We'll plug one end of the ethernet cable into the port at the bottom of the wave, and the other end into our internet connected access point. To confirm the connection with our wave turned on, we'll select the gear icon and enter system settings. Under the network section, we'll select wired. If connected, the screen will indicate connected and show the IP address our wave is given through DHCP. The third way you can connect your wave to the internet is with a cellular signal via cellular modems and hotspots that allow USB tethering. First, we'll connect our compatible modem to either of the USB ports located on the top and bottom of our device. Under our wave system settings in the network section, we'll tap the modem tab. We can see the green circle next to modem 1, indicating that our cellular modem is connected properly to the wave. By default, we can only use one modem at a time. To bond two modem connections together to increase our broadcast bandwidth, we can employ the use of a ShareLink account. Now that we're powered up and connected to a network, we'll go over the process of connecting our wave to a video source, such as a switcher or a camera. For this section, we'll need an HDMI cable. We'll first plug it into the wave at the bottom of the device, and then connect the other end of our cable to our camera. Now that our wave is powered, connected to the internet, and connected to a video source, it's time to create our first event. Wave is built on a powerful new operating system called Flow OS. Flow OS allows you to easily create, pre-configure, and reuse live stream events right from the Wave's touchscreen interface. This is incredibly useful as you can set up these events well ahead of time, so you're not rushing to set up your stream at the time of the event. To get started with our Wave powered on and receiving a video signal, we'll enter the Create a New Event screen, tap on the event name to create a name, then we'll select a thumbnail for easy visual reference in the Event Carousel screen, and then tap Next. We'll be given the option to select a streaming destination, we can log into a platform such as Facebook or YouTube or tap channel to save to an RTMP destination to stream to multiple times. For this example, we'll be streaming to a Facebook page. Tap add an account, then select Facebook. We have to authorize the wave to post to Facebook. To do this, we can either scan the QR code with a smart device or follow the provided URL on a smartphone, tablet, or computer. We'll enter the code from wave and select approve and follow the rest of the prompts from Facebook. Once authorized, the account will appear on the destination list and can be chosen in any new event created. We'll tap on the destination and then tap next. Let's create a new event by tapping on create a new live stream button on the bottom. Then we'll select go live now. 
then we'll enter the information for our stream, such as destination, title, description, and privacy, and tap next. In the next screen, we'll choose whether to enable recording of our program to a compatible SD card or USB media. We'll insert our SD card, then select Enabled. Then we'll select the drive from the drop-down menu, SD1. Select our format, we're going to go with MP4, and then Enable Auto Recording. Then tap Next. We will then be presented with video quality options. We can customize the options if needed, or leave them at their defaults. We'll then tap Finish. Now we'll be sent to the event page. This is the control center of our live stream. We can view the incoming HDMI signal of our program, as well as see the essential settings and statistics of our event and stream. We can back out of the event page by swiping down on our monitor. This will take us to the event carousel, where we can swipe through and select any of our pre-configured events. To return to event, just tap on the thumbnail. We're ready to go live. We'll go ahead and click the stream button, and we're live. The timer will start counting up and let us know how long we've been live. Since we chose auto record in our setup step, our recording begins as soon as we click the stream button. And if we look over on our Facebook page, we can see that our stream is up and running. When we're ready to end our broadcast, we'll simply tap the stream button one more time and confirm we're ready to end the event. And with that, we just completed our first live stream with Wave. There's no limit to what you can create with Wave. Every tool you need is right at your fingertips. Check out our next video for how to get even more out of your Wave by utilizing the features in our operating system, Flow OS. Happy streaming.